What's going on guys, this is Sam, and our iOS 12 concept was released yesterday. Myself, Andrew Vega, and Maximus Angelicus put a lot of work into this concept. Max did dark mode, Andrew actually animated the concept in the video. If you have not seen that yet, check the link down below, check up in the top right hand corner of the screen, it's absolutely incredible. And then I came up with a lot of the ideas and sort of commissioned the project in general. I'll leave links to the video and the concepts website at iosconcept.com down below in the description. I wanted to make this video to provide some context on the concept, why we chose what we chose, how long it took us, how we did it, and of course, also talk about some other features now that weren't featured in the video yesterday that are still part of our overall ideas for iOS 12. For some quick backstory, we started on this project in December of 2017. I reached out to Andrew, we were friends before, and I had seen his design work and his animation work in particular, and I said, yo dude, like, I wanna do an iOS 12 concept. Do you think we could work on one together? And he was really excited for it, he wanted to, and we just started drafting ideas ideas. And we initially planned to launch this just to show you how big of an undertaking an iOS concept is. We didn't know it was going to be this big. We planned to launch this, I think, on February 4th initially, which was before I was going to leave for an internship. And it was April 6th before the video. Yeah, today is April 6th before the video went live. It was a lot of work, more work than either of us anticipated, uh, but it absolutely paid off in the end. All of your comments and thoughts and likes and shares have been incredible. Uh, from the bottom of our hearts, Max, myself, and Andrew just wanted to say thank you. Let's go ahead and jump into the concept now. So first off, a redesigned lock screen in iOS 12. This was something that sort of grew organically once we started, and we thought it would be really cool in addition to looking at the time and date on the lock screen or recent notifications. Group notifications are also part of this concept. We'll talk about that in a second. In addition to seeing all that, we wanted to be able to view things like text messages, your activity rings, the weather, any missed calls, and of course, what the current conditions are outside. We just wanted to see more functionality from the lock screen, so that's what we designed here. We also envision group notifications. This is one of those things I've seen on Reddit time and time and time and time again. People don't like the current notification system in iOS 11. If you get 30 text messages, they will show up on the lock screen, ungrouped in notifications, ungrouped in 30 different spots because they are not selected or grouped together. In iOS 12, we really wanna see group notifications. That is something that I would absolutely love. And it's also realistic. And that was a main point of, not contention, but focus for our concept. We wanted everything that we came up with to be realistic, to be possible, to be feasible. I love as much as the next person, those crazy far out there iOS concepts that look like Android or a different version of iOS that we've never seen before, completely redesigned from the ground up. But realistically, for iOS 12, we're probably not going to see that. We're hearing it's going to be a smaller update. So we wanted everything as part of our concept to be feasible, to be doable, maybe even launch in June at WWDC 2018. After lock screen is a redesigned volume HUD or heads up display. This is one of the top complaints in iOS right now. I cannot tell you how many times I've seen on r slash Apple, r slash iPhone, probably r slash iOS beta, just across the internet, people don't like how when you turn the volume up and down, it gets right in the middle of your screen. It's definitely jarring, it looks a little bit weird. So in this concept, we took a, a little bit of a different approach. On the iPhone 10, it'll go in the top left-hand corner of your screen on the left side of the phone, or the left ear, if you wanna call it that. And on every other iPhone, it would just go in the status bar like this. We thought it was subtle, it wasn't too big of a change, something that Apple could totally and realistically do in the next year. After that is dark mode, and we knew from day one as well, this was something that we wanted to see in our iOS 12 concept. It is the number one requested feature without contention that people want to see in a future version of iOS. It was rumored in the past, probably going to be rumored again in the future. I really hope it is. I want to see this as part of iOS 12. At the very latest, I want a dark mode in iOS 13. And Andrew and I tried for a number of days to design dark mode, to get it to look the way that we wanted it to look, and we just couldn't do it. We tried and tried and tried, Andrew especially, on dark mode to create something that we both were in love with, and we just couldn't. Everything that we came up with looked like the concept that somebody else had already made by a guy named Maximus Angelicus. So we thought maybe instead of doing our own dark mode, we should just reach out to him. And we did, and we didn't think that he would be interested in being a part of this at all or even in responding, but he did. He was actually a, a fan of the channel he had watched before, and he was like, I'd love to be a part of this concept and help you guys out in any way. This concept, without question, would not be complete without Max's help. I will leave links to his website and the social media down below. He's done incredible design work for the dark mode concept, the best dark mode concept without question that I have ever seen. On the website, I featured Max's contact page, how that would look, the app store,
store how that would look as a dark mode that one especially looks very slick and settings as well this was sort of a watch os dark mode take on ios 12 and if this would actually happen i would be so excited after dark mode one of my personal favorite parts of the concept which is new wallpapers i'm a huge fan of wallpapers in general i make videos about them i love changing up my setup and my wallpaper on my iphone all the time on the regular so i found these three different wallpapers i think on pexels.com or pexels.net and uh, they turned out pretty good, I think. We went with a more sand or dune inspired theme. It was somewhere that iOS had never gone before and somewhere that we wanted to travel with our concept. If you want to download the wallpapers as well, link will be down below. After new wallpapers, I wanted to bring new emojis to iOS 12. The emojis themselves are courtesy of Emojipedia. I will leave links to them down below. I never directly reached out to them or contacted them over the course of this concept, but they do a really great job every year designing the next generation of emojis and how they could look on iOS specifically. So they blended in really well with this concept. On top of the new emojis themselves, I wanted to tweak the emoji view panel just a little bit. So I wanted to add search. You can see that at the very top here and down at the bottom, at least exclusive to the iPhone 10, would be a frequently used section. And I've got a few down there that would be your most frequently used emojis rather than having to search for them or only view recently used. You could view your frequently used down below at the very bottom. Then we have a redesigned version of the Reminders app. Andrew designed this entirely on his own. I think he did an excellent job with it. You've got your to-do grocery ideas, goals. You can make any list there and it's all color coded so you can sort through them. I, uh, I've been a proponent of a redesigned reminders app for a very long time. I think it just looks pretty outdated, especially in iOS 11. I think the reminders app last time it was changed was in iOS 7 or in iOS 8. So I'm ready for a redesign. Something ultra flat like this would look really good. And I think this just looks beautiful in general. One of my favorite iPad features in iOS 11 is the ability to swipe up from the bottom of your screen and go into the app switcher and control center at the same time and I wanted to bring that to the iPhone with iOS 12. For a long time I felt like the app switcher has had a lot of extra space in it so I came up with this. At the very top you would have your recently used applications that is your traditional multitasking view but at the bottom you also have complete access to control center. You would swipe left and right to go between your frequently used applications and multitasking and then swipe up and down or tap on toggles to go through the entirety of control center all in the same place. Ever since I got the iPhone 10, I've never been a huge fan of how control center was located in the top right and multitasking was in a completely different area by swiping up from the bottom and holding. So I figured swiping up in one fluid motion and then pausing for just one second would allow you to view control center and multitasking at the same time. And I was really happy with how it turned out. For this redesign of Siri, I got inspiration from iOS 6 and the iOS notification system. I always thought it was a bit strange how in iOS 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11, no matter what you asked Siri, it was always in a full screen view. But if you're just doing something smaller, like turning down the volume or asking about the weather, I don't think that, that necessitates a full screen view or pop up on your screen. So I just wanted a sort of slided notification banner like this at the very top. If you want to ask Siri something that doesn't require the use of the entire display, it could slide down like this and not really interrupt your workflow. Group FaceTime I had to see as part of our iOS 12 concept. It is one of my most highly anticipated features for the future. We've heard that FaceTime improvements could realistically be coming based on a rumor I think from Bloomberg. They could be coming to iOS 12 in the future. We don't know for sure yet, but I'm really, really hoping that it's group FaceTime because because only being able to do one-on-one -on -one FaceTime in 2018 totally feels like something like FaceTime when it was first released. It just really hasn't developed or changed that much over the years. This isn't always on display. This would only be available on the iPhone 10 because of the OLED or Super Retina HD display because you can only light up the individual pixels that you need to light up. So I think it'd be really cool to have this on the future iPhone in iOS 12. There's a lot of people who don't get always on displays. I have a few Android phones that have the feature and I don't necessarily use it or love it all the time, but I do really like the idea of being able to view your missed notifications or the notifications that are currently sitting on the lock screen in the top left hand corner of the screen in a very minimalistic way. Following the always on display we have new and emojis. I think it'd be really cool to see frog, bunny, tiger, cow, octopus and then this is sort of an easter egg but I put the clown at the very bottom because I feel like while clown would be terrifying as an and emoji it would also be really fun to send to people. And emojis are a really fun part of the iPhone 10. I believe 12 initially launched with the iPhone 10. Four more were added in iOS 11.3 and Bloomberg has reported that more and emojis are coming to iOS 12 with the iPhone 10 in the future and presumably on the uh, highly anticipated Face ID enabled iPad. I'd be really happy if any of the emojis here were actually added to iOS 12. My favorite of the bunch I think would definitely have to be Frog or Tiger. To round out our iOS 12 concept, I want to show you one last feature. This one was not included in the animated video. This is native Shazam integration inside of the music app. Apple bought Shazam for probably a lot of money a while back and I think because Apple owns Shazam now, it's still available as a third-party application in the App Store but 
but because Apple bought them, I think it would make a lot of sense for Shazam to be natively integrated inside of the music app. So I could see it looking something like this. All of your recently played music or recent Shazams would be placed in the background. And then when you tapped on Shazam, it would spin, give you a really nice animation and let you Shazam whatever song was currently playing. That's gonna wrap up our iOS 12 concept. Uh, once again, a huge shout out to Andrew and Max for helping me on this project. Andrew did all the animation for the video. Max did everything with dark mode and the always on display. They are two super talented individuals. I could have never come up with anything that they came up with on my own. So please check them out. Huge shout out to them once again. And also just wanted to say thank you to all of you for watching and liking and sharing. You are incredible. And you are the reason that we made this iOS 12 concept in the first place. It took a lot of time. We spent months on this project, but I can't tell you how excited uh, Andrew and I were to officially unveil this to the world earlier today. If you enjoyed watching, if you enjoyed this video, it does help me out. If you take one second to drop a like, and of course hit subscribe for more concepts like this in the future. And if you want to help support the channel, head over to shop.iupdatos.com, buy a t-shirt there. That would be incredible. For now, I've been Sam. I hope all of you are doing great and I'll talk to you in my next video.